Hey yeah, folks, so tonight I've got yet another IPS LCD kit, this one for a Game Boy Advance SP, and uh, you'll have to forgive me, this isn't going to be a, a normal install because I'm, I'm starting with a Game Boy Advance SP that I actually don't have a case for. Um, for the most part, this is built up from parts, and I mean, obviously at some point it was an actual Game Boy Advance SP, but I've had this thing, just the bare PCB sitting on my desk for like over a year now, and uh, I think it's time to finally put it together now that I've got everything working for it. Uh, so it is complete, does work perfectly fine. Uh, front lip model, of course, even though these IPS kits are compatible with both models, um, zero issues, zero modification required to the motherboard, just plug it in and it works. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Uh, let's take a look at what we get with the kit. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this kit to me to check out here. Always been really good to me, giving me all the best toys. Uh, but anyway, open the box, this is what you get. Or box, bubble wrap, excuse me. We get a little plastic baggie, and full disclosure, I have been inside this before, so this isn't exactly how everything was packed. But this is everything that was in the packaging here. We get a ribbon cable, a LCD with the lens already pre-applied to it, yet another sticker that needs to be applied, some double-sided tape, a PCB, and a wire. Not bad if I do say so myself. Uh, so real quick, just a quick tangent on this LCD. Uh, the company that makes this kit, which is to be unnamed because they just don't have a name and they don't brand anything and it drives me crazy, but uh, anyway, they have switched over to a new brand of LCD. It is still the same style LCD. It is still compatible. If you have an older L LCD, you can use it in place of this one, or you can use this LCD in, in place of an older one on an older kit. Perfectly compatible. However, I am working on another video that may or may not get uploaded before this one, talking about the differences between these new LCDs and the old ones. Uh, these are from a company called Topoly, T-O-P-P-O-L-Y, whereas the old LCDs are from LG. Uh, the, L the LG LCDs are much higher quality, much nicer. I'm much happier with them than these, especially this one in particular, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. This new backlight kit, instead of having uh, everything on the ribbon itself like this one here, they have a ribbon cable and then a PCB. I believe it's cheaper to manufacture this way, or at least easier. They have a lower failure rate on assembling the PCBs than they do the ribbons. And if you rip the ribbon, of course, you can just replace this. There's no components on it. It's completely passive. It's much cheaper to replace this than it is to replace something like this. Uh, however, as of writing this, um, or filming this, excuse me, Jesus. I don't script these, you guys know me. Um, as of filming this, these ribbons are not available separately. I'm sure they will be at some point, or you might have to ask nicely, but there you have it. Now you might notice there are two touch sensors hanging off this PCB, um, and if you're looking carefully at the PCB, you might even notice that it looks pretty familiar looks very similar to the Game Boy Color PCB that they have already released. Now, based on the what few text there is on here, 2-in-1, I'm assuming 2-in-1 uh, means this is for Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP, and based on the Game Boy Advance kit I have that I'll be doing a video on later, I think that's what they're referring to, even though this has the exact same board layout and connectors and touch sensors and uh, solder pads down here as the Game Boy Color kit. I don't think this will work in a Game Boy Color. I will try it out later. Not in this video though. 
but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with this here. Um, I still really wish they would do this from the factory. It's just such a simple thing, but it's an easy step to skip if you're not paying close attention. You just got to stick it down to the back of the screen here. Uh, the idea of that is to insulate it against this PCB that's going to get stuck down just about like this. And I am actually going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny square of the uh, adhesive, the double-sided tape that it comes with to hold that PCB down to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just using such a tiny bit. That way, if I do have to remove it, it's not difficult in the slightest. And you'll have to forgive me. I was messing around with some hair dye earlier, and I ended up staining my fingers. That's what the red and the purple stuff is. All right, I'm going to stick it right in the middle, or at least right in the corner so that it's in the middle of the screen. And that should be it. I'm a little bit worried with how much that sticks out, but hopefully it'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna set this stuff aside and let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's victim. So I've got this aftermarket shell that I really want to use. Originally, I was thinking about using this uh, OEM shell that I salvaged. Um, well, that I didn't salvage, but that I bought as salvage. Uh, it's just an empty shell. It should have all the buttons and, and, and components and stuff, but it's, it's a genuine OEM IQ shell with all the labels and stuff intact. But since this isn't an IQ PCB, I'd feel weird about it, and especially because I, I do actually still have to modify this shell. So let's get into the modification. Now let's do some power tests first. So I'm going to pull that off here. The square nut isn't in here already. I just screwed that down. It's still in the baggie right there. Anyway, besides the point. Let's get some power usage numbers for the spreadsheet. That is way too high voltage. That was about 3.7. That looks good to me. And of course I just bumped it with the SP, didn't I? It's okay. I'll fix it in just a moment. should have adjusted the other one. Oh well, that's why I added two. Okay, so let's take a look here. And because I think most people use their console with the front light on, I am measuring with the front light on, even though it takes much less power with it off, despite how it might look on screen here. All right, so in the usual spot with the usual game, it is pulling 53.56789, 53.8 milliamps at 3. Point, well, it was 3.7, but it looks like it dropped down to 3.66 volts. All right, let's try out the new one. Let's see how much less power efficient it is. Try bringing that back up. <laughs> there is a new power supply I'm looking at replacing this with. Uh, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but I think I think with how much I use these things, I might as well. Alright, and 
hold it by the glass. Here goes nothing. So at the default brightness level, whatever brightness level this is, in the overworld it's pulling 122.374, whatever. Let's call it 122.5. However, one of the new features with this kit, those touch sensors there, and I just accidentally hit that top one against this wire, and as you can see, this kit has custom color palettes. Um, We'll talk more about that later. I'm going to hit the bottom one, which is brightness. Uh, just zoom that out and you can see. See, it went up 159, 169, and then all the way down to 105, 2, 113. Uh, I hit it twice. So that's 4, 129, 5, 137, 6, 144, 7, 152, 8, 160, 9, 168, and then back down to 0, or back down to 1. So there's 9 levels of brightness. So you don't actually have to solder despite this having a solder pad on the ribbon, but I don't know, maybe you want to, maybe you don't like these touch sensors and I don't really blame you. Notice if we power cycle it, it does remember the brightness setting, uh, except that I just brought my finger near that sensor and it triggered it again. I don't know, it's, it's hard because just touching this back of the LCD is going to trigger one of the sensors. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on. I'll set that aside. And we won't be needing this anymore. Alright, so because I did kind of gloss over this, I'm just going to do it again. This ribbon goes into this PCB with the contacts down. And then it's going to end up getting folded. Something like this? I don't know. Well, I'll get it more assembled before I crease it and commit to something. These touch sensors, however, can go wherever the hell you want to put them. And uh, that's something that I'm gonna have to figure out. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for now because we need to work on the top of the shell here. And uh, spoiler alert, this is a fully custom shell that I ordered and I think it looks awesome. But that's besides the point. This is not IPS ready. So as far as the front half of the shell goes, or at least the LCD part, That'll drop right in there, and yes, I know there's a film here that we have to remove. But I just want to check and make sure that this overlap wasn't going to hurt anything, and it doesn't look like it is. So as far as the trim goes, if I recall correctly, we need to cut this. And if I recall, we do not need to cut the whole thing, so let's try it out. I believe we just need to cut this part through this part. Eh, let me draw on that whole thing just so you can see. just to see better on film, film, on video. There we go. All right, so if you have a Dremel, and I do, but I'm not gonna use it for this, uh, you can actually just cut about halfway down. The 
only need to cut down to about here or so maybe deeper so if you're using a transparent shell you don't have to go all the way to the bottom this way it'll help hide some of the lines or some of the cut marks um, I don't have a transparent shell so I'm not worried about that in the slightest and it's otherwise 2.30 a.m. and I live in an apartment so I shouldn't be using my Dremel anyway. But uh, I'm gonna get my nice flush cutters for this, or at least my not dulled ones. These are far from nice, but they're nice and sharp still. Oh, except the tip that I totally ruined. That's nice. <sighs> oh, here we go. These'll work. I'm going to do that a snip, go over here, give that a snip, and where is my knife? There it is. We're going to try doing a partial cut with the knife here. Now, ideally, since we can't really bend it this way, uh, we'd want to score this side so we can bend it that way and break that way, but that's not really going to work either. So maybe we'll just keep cutting like this. This is in uh, this is one of the older plastic shells, so it is pretty soft material. Pretty clever on the seller's part to do this by putting that art on there. and get rid of old stock. If the seller still has these listed, I'll throw a link in the description. Full disclosure though, it's Taobao, so good luck. Godspeed. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure if this was like a one-off or a limited time thing or what. If he's still offering them, I'll throw a link. If there's no link, then sorry. No more to be had. All right, let's try that out. And again, this isn't a clear shell, so I don't really care about cleaning that up, but certainly could. I'm just removing the ribbon for now. Don't worry about it later. Just wanna see, test fit. doesn't quite fit. So I think we still need to trim more. I do think, based on the small dent I accidentally just left in the screen, I'm gonna assume we need to trim more of this. So we're going to cut it flush with the side here. There we go. Noise. All right, now we can move on to the next step. That was a lot easier. So I'm just gonna accept it now that I'm gonna get fingerprints all over this, remove the film. And look at that, there is a logo on there, in case you guys were wondering. They specifically black out this film here because of customs issues that they've been having. Um, they, it's cheaper to put that film on every single lens than it is to deal with all the 
customs seizures they've been having. Uh, oh, you know what? Before we even continue, I need to join these two halves of the shell with some hinges. So these are left hinders. Let's get some aftermarket ones. And right hinders. I did do a video on hinges as well. Um, I'll, if I remember, I'll try and throw a link in the description. But long story short, they are directional. They there are two different hinges. The black one goes on the left, white one goes on the right. Uh, sometimes they're both colors, like the body might be black, whereas the rest of it's where the clips are white. Pay attention to the clip color, not the body color. Oh, and we got to move this out of here and slide on the hinge covers. Oh, this is terrible, isn't it? One unfortunate problem with these cheap aftermarket shells is all this flashing. Luckily, it's pretty easy to trim, but it would be nice to not have to, you know? Looks like there's some trimming that needs to be done in here too. But before I do that, I'm just gonna try sliding it on extra hard. Oh yeah. All right, I think that'll be fine. All right, and to insert them, it needs to be open to the normal position here. And that should pop right in there. Start with the other one. Sometimes it's easier. Okay. This is why we're doing this or we get the screen in. Okay. That's one. And this does go a lot easier on OEM shells usually. That's two, nice and clicky. Okay. Ah, oh, dropping buttons. Just take those out for now. And good thing this includes screws because guess what I don't have? That's right. It screws. Probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but if you want the full uh, install process, I have done these before, these screen kits. Uh, not the one with the PCB, but aside from these touch sensors, everything is going to be similar, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I wouldn't recommend one of my other videos. I don't know where I want to put this these touch sensors. Like, should we... Let's 
sorry, more flashing to remove. Like, should we put them up at the top or something? Should we put them down here? I think down here makes the most sense, but I don't know if it's gonna work through all this glass and everything. I'm genuinely worried about these wires breaking off at this point. This is not solid material. Screw it, let's try it. I'm not even gonna bother using the adhesive because it'll stick. There's already adhesive on the lens. Maybe we need to give it a fighting chance, you know, one less layer of, of, of adhesive. Okay. That should be good enough. Let's feed this through now. Again, contacts down. This really should have been facing the other way, but I guess they wanted to keep their... Um, I'm forgetting the, the word for it, but they want... They don't want to make that many different PCB designs, and I totally get it. We'll give it a little loop-de-loop, -loop, shove it through that hole. I'll shove that on there, and that should hold everything in place. There's no foam or anything that goes on the back of the lens, or on the back of the LCD. Um, just having the back on should hold everything in place. Let's sort my screws here, see what I got. That's weird. I think those must be the motherboard screws, and those must be the screen screws. All right. So the Game Boy Advance SP uses two different length screws with two different screw heads. So there are short screws and long screws, and then JIS screws and tri-point screws. Whenever possible, I recommend using your OEM screws. Unfortunately, I can't, because I just don't have any. And, ooh, it helps so much when you have the right driver. And the screen takes five short screws, uh, but the head is going to depend entirely on what model SP. So on AGS 001s, those came with five tri-wing screws, whereas 101 models came with five JIS head screws. I don't know why. They just did, because N Nintendo. All right, we'll stick these in there. Interesting that this shell, um, these little things don't have any adhesive on either side. So hopefully just the pressure being in there will hold them in place. Won't lose anything. All right, and then pop on the hinge cover. This one, on a normal SP, it is a long cross-headed screw, but on mine it is a medium length cross-headed screw. That is a different color than every other screw in the bag for some reason. Alright. 
And then from here, make sure your buttons are in. Uh, I would be using the buttons it came with, but it was missing a brightness button. It's not really worth arguing with the seller. It would cost more in shipping if I had to pay for it than a whole new button set is worth. So I'm just going to use these black buttons off to the side that I already set out. I, I have between two and three sets. I don't know what's what, so I'm just going to find some buttons that match because these are from two different molds, as you can tell by the font on these buttons. Bear with me. Because, yeah, and here's another thing. These are both start and select buttons. One of them has a glossy texture, one of them has a matte texture. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking to mix and match right now. I also don't know which ones are the good ones, unfortunately. And out of all these buttons, I only have one brightness button. Looks like it's the matte set, so that's what I'm going with. I've always wanted to make a platinum colored Game Boy with, uh, with black buttons, so. This is nice. Granted, I want to use OEM parts, but so be it. All right, that's enough for now. And I do actually still have the OEM membranes, which is what I'm going to use, because usually they feel better than the aftermarket ones. And somehow, so the speaker there. All right, so at this point we have to make a decision. Because of those touch sensors, we do not have to solder in brightness control. Um, I'm going to do it for the sake of the video, but it is entirely a redundant function. So I suppose that is one of the nice things about these new kits. Let me set those games aside. And I'm not sure the easiest way to do this. I remember I did it one way. And then in the comments, everyone said, oh, it's much easier if you do it this way. And I agreed with them because they were right. I just don't remember which is which. So we're just going to go for it. So I'm going to use the wire it includes, even though it is like four times as long as it needs to be. Actually, no, I'm not gonna use the wire it includes. I'll save this because I have on my desk right here, a wire that is approximately the length it needs to be. Oh, that's a little short. What else do I have in this pile? That's all. That's all enough. Okay. I'll use this one. It has a touch sensor on it, but we don't need that. Alright. So to use the brightness button, you need to solder to, I believe it is, yeah. It's this one right here. So there's two right on top of each other. It's the top one labeled uh, Q12. Well, it's not actually labeled Q12B, but um, that's the closest label to it. Oh, well, maybe it is Q12B, I don't know. Or you can solder directly to the button. I think it's easier to use. I generally prefer to use the button pads instead of test points. But in this case, the uh, button pad would be under the membrane and I don't like soldering under the membrane. Alright, might as well tin this while it's easier to get to. By the way, if this is your first time soldering, don't, don't do this. 
start with something much easier. I know I tend to make this stuff look easy, but that's because I've been doing this for years. Not Game Boy mods in particular, but soldering. And um, with practice, it gets a lot easier. practice it gets a lot easier. If you're starting out soldering for the first time, highly recommend get a cheap electronics kit on eBay or AliExpress or something and start off by soldering that. That way, if you don't nail it on the first try, you're out a $3 electronics kit and not a $50 backlight kit. Yeah? I feel like that makes more sense. Alright, and now we can just wrap this around. Solder right onto the It is much easier if you have enough slack on your wire, and I just barely do. That is not a joint I'm proud of, but I think we're going to be fine. Just want to make sure it's routed out of the way of the membrane and everything else. And we'll just flip that down. If you're using a new aftermarket shell, make sure you have your light pipes in there. Or even if you took this opportunity to clean your shell, make sure you put the light pipe back. Because, you know, just trying to look out for you. You don't want to put it all the way back together and realize you're missing parts. Alright, the motherboard takes three short crosshead screws. It's the same on every model. Don't over tighten them or you're going to have a bad time. They'll poke through. Don't use the long ones. You're going to have even worse time. And let's swab out the buttons. Did I really just bend that? I did. I just bent my spring. Oops. I have a whole bag full of these things. I don't know why I don't just use one of those. Okay. So, if you're replacing shoulder buttons, these springs are not the same. They are mirror images of each other. One goes on the right, one goes on the left. So if we zoom in here, you can see this one, the uh, curved portion is on the bottom, and the straight portion is on top. Same thing for this one, but notice it's pointing the other direction. This is the right hand or right button. This is the left button. Even though that's no, yeah, I had that right. I'm sorry. All right, and which buttons do I want? Because I have... That texture, that texture. And that texture and that texture. Let's use the less shiny ones. Okay. As far as reassembly goes, go ahead and flip this over. Put the curved portion inside that slot and hold it with your thumb while you put the coil in the middle and you can slip that pin in and then slip it in the shell just like that and you can bring the hinge around or the spring around and drop it in the catch 
again, sorry if I make this look tremendously easy, but I've got years of practice. Boom. All right. Now, if you're using your OEM shell, you probably don't have to worry about this, but if you took it apart and you heard something fall out, it was probably this square nut. This square nut goes in this hole right here. Without this square nut, you have no battery cover retention. And then we just need a power switch. I like this one better. I suppose we didn't need a power switch. Power switch goes in the bottom. Doesn't matter if it's on or off. Just make sure if it's off over here, it's also off over here. And then drop that down. Right, it always makes me nervous when everything lines up but the power switch. I'm always just terrified of cracking that off. Should be fine, but yeah. There we go. All right, screws. So you should only have six screws left at this point. The four long ones go in the four corners. The two short ones, one in the battery compartment, one in the uh, cart slot down there. These should all be tri-point. In my case they are. Do not over tighten these. You will have a bad time. Especially in an aftermarket shell. It might be a good idea to actually leave out these short ones if you're using an aftermarket shell because notice, I don't have it screwed down all the way, but notice it's kind of got like a bubble top to it. This will scratch up your carts. I'm just going to tighten it very slowly. tighten any of these enough. That was on, that was by design. Because I want them only as tight as they need to be, and no more. With a new shell, it's always difficult to tell because the, um, the screw holes aren't threaded yet. I'm doing that by screwing these in. Yeah, how's that look? Should have tried out the buttons before I had it all screwed together, but it's okay. And uh, last up is a battery. Um, it might actually make more sense to put in a better battery. This is just what I have on my desk. Let me get a better battery. All right, so. I really don't recommend these. Um, I'm using it, like I said, because I had it on my desk. If you can get them still, I highly recommend the Rayovac branded uh, batteries that they sell at Batteries Plus. I've heard rumors that these have been discontinued. I don't know how true that is. If you can still get them, they're pretty good. They are a little bit on the pricey side. Alternatives are the Megabat from uh, Helder. Uh, he sells some pretty good stuff. I am working on a short little video testing these out, um, but TLDW, it really is at least 800 megabyte, um, megabytes, 
Jesus, uh, milliamp hours, and it's a good battery. Works just fine. It doesn't have these little tabs in there, so it will fall out, but that's why there's a screw on your battery cover. Uh, but otherwise, if you don't mind DIY, still the best is my battery mod here. Now, I accidentally shaved this one down just a little bit too much, and so it doesn't quite stay flush against the battery contacts. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do at this point. Um, wink, wink, nod, nod. There is something coming to fix this issue. Um, I can say no more at this point, though. It should still work, as long as we screw this down. Boom. And just making sure. Oh, yeah, it does. It is a little loose if we uh, hit it that way. Okay. Just play it safe. We'll swap it out. Like I said, I got a fix coming. I'm not actually the one working on it, but I have, but I, I, I'm privy to information like that. Of course you could just order another one of these boards and then be careful about sanding these tabs down. It's not like these boards are very expensive. For now we'll rep my boy Helder. He's not really my boy. I've never actually talked to him. Alright. Let me wipe that off. And, uh, oh good, so that does work. We just gotta tap the lens. Nice. So we tap the SP logo or right below it to change the brightness, or we can use the brightness button And does this have ultra secret level brightness? No, it does not. On the funny plane kit, if you press and hold the brightness button, it'll bump it way the hell up. Um, say goodnight to your battery life, but you know, if you need that brightness. All right, let's try out first and foremost, I know it is a Game Boy ROM and not a Game Boy Advance ROM, but the LCD reset commands are still the same. Tilt that down there. Kill that light. And we're going to try out scrolling bar test. So, just like usual, when the uh, S in the word scrolling crosses the left margin, it's going to issue an LCD reset command. Uh, what we're looking for are any dropped frames, which is any skips, which it is going to do that when it resets. That's just unavoidable but what we're looking for are any additional skips, dropped frames, or artifacts, and quite frankly, I don't see any. It's looking pretty good. So for context here, let me grab, that is a funny playing, where it is, there we go, a one chip kit. Good thing I've got two flash cards, eh? So this is the older version of this kit from the same manufacturer, running the exact same test here. And just for comparison, you can see it 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 stutters like every second or so. Um, if you're not seeing it, you might not be watching this video at full resolution. I am filming it at 1080p 60 FPS and that's what it will be uploaded as. Uh, but you can see, you know, it just, it kind of stumbles around. It's kind of choppy in places. Whereas this one, to me, looks much smoother. So I'm happy they finally fixed that. I don't know why they couldn't fix it with this kit, but at least they have it fixed. 
Alright. Let's try. Oh, I don't think we need to try anything else from here. Let's try a Game Boy Advance game. So, and I probably should have pointed this out earlier when it was easier to see, but real quick, I just want to take a uh, sidebar here and I'll stand right there where you can see it. Look in front of the Pokemon, the healing machine here. See this little black dot? That's a dead pixel. Right out of the box, or bag I guess. Right out of the bag, my screen came with a dead pixel. This is just one of the many wonderful things to expect with these new Topoli LCDs. For reference, let's just go ahead and compare these two. The screen on the right is the older version of this kit, um, same manufacturer. However, it comes with an LG screen. Notice the color difference between the two. LG screen, topoly. This one's not that great. I'm not very pleased with their decision to uh, swap out these kits. Uh, let's go ahead and put an emerald in this one. I'll we'll just run the two side by side and you can take a look at the colors and you can compare for yourself. Yes, I know the battery is dead. There is no battery. Again, on the right we have LG and on the left we have Topoli. Colors are different. Who's to say which one's more accurate? Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't care how exhausted you get climbing a mountain. I will say, I'm very pleased with how much smoother this is. But I'm not very pleased with... Wow, I ran into wild Pokemon at the same time on both. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm very pleased with how much smoother this is, but I'm not necessarily as certain about these uh, colors. Of course, that one didn't run. But so far, so good. Um, if you want to know more about these screens, like I said, I am working on another video about this. Uh, so I'm not going to take up too much more of this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill that for now. And we'll get back to this. Oops. I forgot about that already. So this kit does come with custom color palettes. I'm not 100% sure of the reasoning. At least on the Game Boy Advance kit, it makes a little bit more sense on the Game Boy Color kit and even more sense on the Game Boy Pocket kit. But hey, I mean, just because it has a feature doesn't mean you have to use it. You can always just snip off the touch sensor. Uh, but if you ever wanted to play Game Boy Advance in black and white, pretend you're playing on a DMG, there you go. We also have this. I don't know what this is, but. It's this. It's still in full color, it's just weird. I wonder if they can make a custom color palette to uh, take into account the uh, deficiencies of these new screens. I just want to get out of this cave now, please. Same thing, full color, just pink tinted, I guess. You know what, let's... Look at this. Pink. 
I think... I don't even know what that is. Let's start the game. Yeah, it's still in full color. It's very green. Green and yellow. This one, I think, looks like a blue light filter or something. Ooh, that is even more green. I don't know what's up with these color shades. I mean, it's cool. I think it requires more playing with, but... I have no idea. Actually, I kind of like that. It almost makes it look like the games that, you know, it's like twilight now. Not exactly night, but that moment when it's right about to be night. Late evening. Early af late afternoon. Early evening. Whatever. Depending on time of the year, I guess. Ooh, and then that's like early morning. I think that's actually the normal color palette now. <laughs> yeah. And then there's black and white again. Or grayscale. Yeah, there you go. Cool stuff. All right, so I don't really have any, any, I don't have much else to say about this kit. It works pretty nicely. Um, I'm not very happy with the screen choice, but as far as I can tell, that's the only downside. Otherwise, it seems like a great kit. So thanks again for Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this to me. I kind of actually hate that I like it. Is that weird? Like I'm, I'm so butthurt about what they did with these screens. I'm almost tempted to say, you know, maybe get this kit and then try and track down one of those laminated screens. Uh, Funny Playing directly sells laminated SP screens. Uh, sorry. Didn't think I was going to talk about this, so I didn't have it ready. Uh, Funny Playing does sell these directly. This is the LCD. This is still using the LG panel. Uh, and it's the, they have their square lenses without the cutouts. If you use one of these, you do need the uh, foam that does come with the kit, that but does not come with um, the bare LCDs. But yeah, I'll throw a link to Funny Playing Store if you want to check it out. I think, unless you're like, you know, hardcore into these color palettes, I think it's still better to just buy the Funny Playing kit in the first place. But if you're hardcore into these color palettes, you know, you can get them black borders, white borders, and red borders with gold text, like the Famicom units. That's an option. But anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up. Um, try and engage you if you can. Even if I don't respond to every comment, I do at least read them all. Um, go ahead and check out the description. I do always try and throw some auxiliary information in there. Uh, as well as product links if you want to check this out. And then, again, just huge thank you to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing me this kit to play with. I think it's pretty cool, and I'm glad I got to play with it. I think I'm one of the first few people to play with one of these. I can't even find them for sale at the moment as of July 27th, aside from on Retro Game Repair Shop. Actually, I don't even know if they're listed yet. Uh, but anyway... They will be soon, if not already, and uh, I'll throw a link down in the description, and uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.